All right, we're Team 12. We're going to be presenting Mechanism Analysis and Synthesis. I'm Alfred Salas. I'm Jesse Gonzalez. I'm Julian Selling. And I'm Daniel Lee. For our presentation agenda, well, well, the main topics we're going to be covering is Introduction to Mechanisms, Project Overview, and Conclusion. To begin, an introduction to mechanisms. A uh, mechanism dis defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary states that a mechanism is a piece of machinery, a mechanical part or group of parts having a particular function. In engineering terms, a me mechanism is used to convey work or motion generated from an input source to an output source. As you can see in the lower right hand side, this is a, a, uh, an example of a mechanism from the Renaissance era which is called an Archimedes screw. As you can see, the crank here would be your input. As you rotate the, the, the crank, it rotates the screw, and what this does is it transfers water from a lower lying region to a higher, higher area. For a mechanism to transfer work and motion effectively, there's two main components which influence and dictate the design. First is the joint. One of the most common joints used is a rigid joint. During mobility analysis, the rigid joint provides zero degrees of freedom because it doesn't allow any movement in any direction. On the other hand, you have a spherical uh, joint, and what this allows for is motion in all, all directions. And during mobility analysis, what this provides is three degrees of freedom. On the other hand, you have a link. Most of the times you have a fixed link, which is not displayed in the, the picture. However, you do have an, uh, another type of link which is called a planar linkage, which is this shaded region here, which is a triangle. Despite multiple joints being connected to the link, it is still considered a single link during mobility analysis. Hello, my name is Jansker Gonzalez, and I was in charge of conducting the kinematic analysis required in order to see the full motion of the slider crank mechanism. So we see um, the project overview. You can see that the first part says to analyze the slider crank mechanism when the input is taken at one degree intervals. So what this means is we want to see how this one degree of freedom mechanism will react when the input is taken at one degree steps. If we take a look at the picture, we can see that two of the links are actual physical entities that are pushing and pulling the slider. The, slider. the other two are, are representative mathematical distances. So R1 in this case is just a distance between the prismatic slider and the revolute joint parallel to the incline of the slider. And R4 is just the, pair, the perpendicular distance between R1 and the prismatic slider. Um, we are also going to have to calculate the position tra trajectory of a specific point S. So this is annexed onto the coupler, which is uh, QS. We also de determine the joint velocities and accelerations and model practical application and demonstrate its operation. For the analysis, rather than doing it manually for 360 iterations, what we did was we uh, developed a MATLAB code where it would take the essential loop equations, which is just vector addition of the representative vectors, and run it through 360 iterations. So our input, or our index, was theta 2, 1 through 360. Our, omega, our uh, angular velocity is 3 inches per second, and our given ex uh, angular acceleration is 0 inches per second squared. So when we take a look at the position trajectory of point S, we take a look at these four plots over here that we developed in order to see the actual trajectory of the point, uh, rather than just show the value of the displacement as a function of time. Uh, we were given the length of the coupler to be 10 inches, and the angle of the coupler link was arbitrarily chosen at 45 degrees. As we can see here in the four plots, when uh, theta two is the displaced 90 degrees, you see a clockwise, a counterclockwise rather, uh, trajectory of the point. Uh, if we look at uh, theta 2 equal to 180, it moves even further down, and then we can see uh, how it forms a, a sort of egg-like shape. shape. We're taking a look at the velocity acceleration analysis of link 3. We can see the angular velocity plot on the left-hand side and the angular acceleration on the right-hand side. Uh, we managed to put both plots together on one just to uh, have a reassuring idea of how uh, both of these plots each other. So the angular velocity, you can see, you can, you can find the max at around 200 degrees of the theta 2 uh, displacement. And also on the angular acceleration, you can see at that same point, you have zero angular acceleration. Uh, this is just done in order to reassure us that the data we've obtained is solid data. 
Uh, similarly, we've done the same for uh, R1 versus theta 2 and the angular acceleration of R1 versus theta 2. On the left hand side, we have the linear velocity, which is maximum around uh, 100 degrees and at around 315 degrees. You can see maximum velocity of the slider, uh, slider itself. And linear acceleration plot on the right hand side. Again, we have uh, confirmed that these, these data points are valid. Hi, my name is Julian Sella, and I was responsible for the second part of the project, which was the four bar synthesis. Um, so basically, we were given three points that the coupler needed to pass through, and we needed to base our model on these points and see if the coupler, if the four bar mechanism would actually reach all these points. So, for the first step of the four bar synthesis, you have to first solve for your pole positions. So, you set up this uh, matrix equation and you have to solve for this unknown uh, a0x and a0y. So first you have to find the inverse of the first matrix and you multiply it by the resultant matrix and the answer you'll get from that are your pole positions. And for our a0 we got negative 0 0.02 and negative 0 0.02 and then for b0 we got 44.99 for the x-coordinate and negative 0 0.01 for the y-coordinate. So once your pole positions are solved for, which would be these points right here on the four bar mechanism, you have to find each length of your link. So basically you would use the distance equation in order to see how far this point is from this point, this point is from this point, et cetera, and you'd find all the link lengths. So once our link lengths are known and verified, we have to determine what type of mechanism we have. So using Grashoff's rule, which is the longest link length plus the shortest link length has to be less than the two intermediate link lengths, um, if that inequality is proven to be true, then we have a type 1 mechanism, which for our case it was, so we had a crank rocker. Hi, I'm Daniel Oliva, and I was in charge of designing and uh, modeling the real-life applications of both of our mechanisms. For our slider crank mechanism, we decided to create a water pump. Given that our specifications required that our input be a rotating link R2, uh, we decided to create a water pump because of this math. Um, our input shaft is attached to an electric motor which rotates link R2. Link R2 then pulls on R3 which slides the piston up and down. Um, our input shaft is attached to an electric motor where the power will be drawn through and the whole assembly is within a housing that has a dimensions of 70 by 60 by 26 inches. The cylinder bore is 12 inches and the cylinder stroke is 32 inches and since our input is 28.65 RPMs then our water pump is capable of displacing 426.7 cubic feet of water per minute. The way that our uh, pump works is that as a close-up of our cylinder, you can see that the water inlet is on the bottom of the cylinder and the water outlet is on the end of the cylinder. The water inlet will have a one-way valve that only allows water to be drawn in through the cylinder as the piston moves backwards, but it doesn't allow water to be pushed back out of that valve as the piston moves forwards. The opposite is true for the water outlet. As the piston moves back, water cannot be drawn into the cylinder, but as the piston moves forward, it will push the water out of the outlet. Here is an animation of our system working. And as you can see, link QRS follows the same exact path that Chancellor has calculated in the previous sections. For our four bar mechanism, we created a rebounding mechanism, which is useful in the NBA. It is useful for any player who wants to practice their shots, and as a player shoots the, a ball, it will go through the basket, fall down through a net that will then place the ball right in its location given, and then once that happens, it will turn on the electric motor, which will then move the linkage and hit the ball back to you and push it down the ramp. Here's another animation of our mechanism working. It's also uh, good to note that this mechanism can be used for multiple sports such as soccer or maybe football when you need the ball to be passed back to, to you. In conclusion, in our project we were able to apply the knowledge that we learned in class to be able to analyze systems and specs that were given to us and in turn design real life applications. We also were able to reverse engineer these mechanisms and for our future work we will be able to look into further industries where all these mechanisms will be able to be applied. Thank you for your time.